don't you sit? I don't want to. What's the champagne for? I thought we could toast your birthday. I am so pissed off at you, Uncle Peck. Why? I mean, are you crazy? What did I do? You really scared the crap out of me sending me that stuff in the mail. They were gifts. I was just trying to give you some little perks your first semester. Well, what the hell were those numbers all about? Only 44 more days to go? Only two more weeks and then just numbers? 69, 68, 67, like some serial killer? Wait a bit. Whoa. This is me you're talking to here. I was just trying to pick up your spirits. I was trying to celebrate your birthday. My 18th birthday. I'm not a child anymore, Uncle Peck. You were counting down the days till my 18th birthday. So? So? So statutory rape is in effect when a young woman turns 18. And you and I both know that. I think you misunderstand. I think I understand all too well. I know exactly what you want to do five steps ahead of you doing it. Defensive Driving 101. Well, then why did you want to meet here instead of at the restaurant? I don't want to have this conversation in public. Fine. Fine. We have a lot to talk about. Yeah, we do. Can I have some champagne? Of course, madam. Allow me to do the honors. <clears throat> I, uh, I wasn't sure what you might prefer. Uh, Tatinje or, or Vouv Keko, so uh, I thought we'd just start with an old standard. Uh, Perrier Jouet. Mm. Hold it. Glass. Just let me get this ginger ale. It's my bubbly, and I will toast you. I'm sorry, Uncle Peck. Let me have another. Let young girl drink alone. Mm. Well, if you insist, Missy. Just one. It's been a while. Okay. There. Now, I would like to propose a toast to you and your birthday. All yours. Wow, I've missed you. I've gotten so used to, to talking to you in my head. I, I'm used to seeing you every week. There's just so much that I, I don't know where to begin. How's school a little bit? I. Harder than what I thought it would be. I'm in the middle of exams and papers and I have an ankle cold. Oh, poor thing, you always do. Maybe, maybe I, I might be flunking out. You always think the worst a little bit, but then when the going gets tough, you, hey, hey, take it easy on this stuff, okay? Is it very expensive? It's nothing but the best for you. But the cost doesn't matter. You know, champagne is supposed to be sipped. Look, if you're having trouble at school, you, you could always come back home for a while. No. Sorry, Uncle Peck, don't keep your sins out with me. Look, you're supposed to get in scrapes your first year away. Think of our new car. It's real nice. What is it again? It's a Cadillac Eldorado. Oh, well, I'm really happy for you, Uncle Peck. Well, I got it for you. What? Well, I thought I always wanted a Cadillac, but I thought 
pack, no, wait till a little bit old enough, but, but you would like to drive it too. Why would I want to drive your car? Just because it's the best. I, I want you to have the best. Listen, Yes, I Uncle keep Pat, trying to go over and over this in my mind. And I, what? Sorry. I'm thirsty. <sighs> well, you're going away has, has made me realize how much I miss you. Talking to you, being alone with you, I... I have really come to depend on you there, Dad. And, and lately it's just been so hard to get in touch with you that the distance and and you're never in when I call. I, I guess you must be living at the library. No, the, the truth is that I haven't been in the library. It, it doesn't matter. I, I, I hope you've been missing me as much. Uncle Clark, I've been thinking about this over and over again in my mind and I came here tonight to tell you that I'm not doing very well. I I can't concentrate on my work. I'm getting very confused and I've been going over and over this in my mind and I don't think we should see each other anymore, other than with the rest of the family. Have you been seeing other men? I really was not seeing. Well, yes, I. You know, it's not really anybody's business. Are you in love with anyone else? That's not what this is about. Little bit, you're scared. Your parents have filled your head with all this nonsense about men. I see them working on you all the time, and you're scared. It won't hurt you if the man you go to bed with really loves you. And I have loved you since the day I held you in my hand. And I just think that everyone has you scared to death over something that's just like leaving. And I oh my God! I can't see you anymore, Uncle Peck! A little bit. Listen. Listen. Open your eyes and look at me. Come on. Open your eyes, honey. All right, then. I just want you to listen. A little bit. I am going to ask you just this once of your own free will. Just, just lie down in the bed with me. Our clothes on. Just lie down with me, a man and a woman, and let's hold one another. Nothing else. Before you say anything else, I, I just want the chance to, to hold you. Because sometimes our body knows things that our mind isn't listening to. And then, after I've held you, I want you to tell me what you're feeling. Walter, you hold me. Yes. And then you can tell me what you're feeling. Yes. All right. Just hold me, nothing else. Wait, wait, a little bit. Did you feel nothing? No, nothing. Did you... Did you think of me? No. I'm 45. That, that, that's not old for a man. And lately, I haven't been do, able to do anything but think of you. I, I can't concentrate on my work. 
little bit. You have to... I want you to think about what I'm about to ask you. I want you to be my wife. I will tell Mary that I want a divorce. We're not blood related. It would be legal. Would what be have you been thinking? You are married to my aunt, Uncle Peck. She is my family. You have... You have gone way over the line. Family is family. I'm leaving. Now I'm not seeing you again. I'm not coming home for Christmas either. You should go home to Aunt Mary. Go home now, Uncle Peck. I think I need a real drink. I... I never saw him again. I stayed away from Christmas and Thanksgiving for years after. It took my uncle seven years finally drink himself to death. First, he lost his job with his wife, and finally his driver's license. He retreated to his house and had those bottles delivered. And one night, he tried to go downstairs into the basement, and he flew down the staircase and upstairs. My Aunt Mary came by weekly and left food on the porch in her machine. Um, stacks of papers and mail uncollected. They found him just eight steps away from his dark room. Now that I'm old enough, there are some things I would like to have asked. Who did it to you, Uncle Peck? How old were you? Were you 11? Sometimes I like to think of my uncle kind of as the, the flying Dutchman. In the opera, the Dutchman is doomed to wander the sea, but every seven years he can come ashore in hopes of finding a young maiden who of her own free will, who will love him and he will be released. And I see Uncle Peck in the back of my mind, driving down, up and down the uh, back roads of Carolina, looking for a young girl who of her own free will, who will love him.